What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right, let's talk some basketball. LeBron's postgame quotes. So the Lakers get a big win against the Brooklyn Nets, bouncing back from a tough loss on the road against the Indiana Pacers. And he hits nine threes in the game, a couple of really tough off the dribble ones, a drifting kind of like fade away in the left corner and then a step back on the right wing uh, to get his eighth and nine threes of the game. He had 40 something in the in the game. Just uh, he's averaging something crazy like 25, uh, uh, 25 points per game on 63 percent true shooting, which is just completely outrageous for a 39 year old guy. But he had a quote after the game. He was asked about how much longer he feels like playing. He says, not very long. I'm not going to play another 21 years, that's for damn sure, but not very long. I don't know when that door will close as far as when I'll retire, but I don't have much time left. And so the question that we posed today is, will LeBron ever play in an NBA Finals again? Now, here's the thing. Of course, it's a possibility. I saw Stephen A. Smith uh, 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 say either this morning, I saw it on Twitter this morning, but he he said that he thought that this was uh, LeBron's last chance this year with the Lakers. I disagree with that. Like, I, I I mean, he might fall off a cliff next year, but I mean, here's the thing. You can try to get ahead of the LeBron decline thing. I'm not going to be that guy. I feel like the people who have been trying to get ahead of that just keep getting proven wrong every single year. Maybe it happens next year. Maybe it doesn't. But here's the deal. The Lakers have access to three first round draft picks when they get to the draft this year. As long as they improve the roster with whatever they do this off season, more then LeBron declines, it's a net improvement for the Lakers. So, of course, they're still going to be in the hunt. I think they need a coaching change. They need to be as healthy next year as they are this year. LeBron needs to avoid any sort of severe injury. But whatever decline LeBron experiences, as long as as they improve the roster around that, he's very much going to be in the mix still. So I don't think this is his last chance, per se. That said, do I think LeBron will ever play in the NBA Finals again as a likelihood? Like, like if I had to apply a percentage chance to it, it's going to be below 50% for me. And the main reason why is I don't think this team is good enough defensively to win the play-in tournament and to win three rounds, all without home court advantage, all against really good teams. I wouldn't count them out. I would, For the record, I'd put below 50% chance to make the finals for literally every team in the West except for the Denver Nuggets. But like it is somewhat unlikely that they get through it this year. And as for the offseason, I don't trust the Lakers front office or ownership group to make the necessary uh, tweaks to the roster to push them over the top. So to me, it's more likely than not that we don't get to see another finals appearance from LeBron, which is kind of a bummer. Because like, honestly, I thought they should have been more aggressive at the deadline this year. Here they've been the fifth best team in the league over the last 39 games since January 27th. And they've been like, uh, we're going to go over some numbers when we get to the power rankings, but like they've been the second best uh, a three-point shooting team over that span. They've been the second be- uh, by percentage. They've been the second best point in the paint team over that span. Like they have a lot of really good things that they bring to the table. As a matter of fact, to put it simply, I don't think the Lakers are that far off. I, I think it's about specific weaknesses with them, not talent deficiencies. I don't think the Lakers have a talent issue. They have a roster balance issue. They have a shit ton of offensive skill in every single position group, and they don't have anybody who can guard on the perimeter. They have like zero top tier athlete types that play at the one or the two. And and that's been their, or or at the three for that matter, uh, because of the Jared Vanderbilt injury. So like, I really don't think they need that much to really enter into those conversations, but I just don't trust this particular franchise to do it. Again, I've talked about this on the show before, but like, like to me, incompetence trickles from the top down. This is the same owner that let Alex Crusoe walk. Like, there's there's not a GM in the league that wouldn't have gotten on hands and knees and begged for Genie Bus to keep Alex Crusoe because he's so obviously such a monumentally important piece to winning basketball games. And Genie Bus just let him walk. Right? And I don't need to get into it, but if you go down. If you go down the t- from the top of the organization, you see the incompetence come through, whether it's the medical staff and their incapability to keep people and fans updated on just what's happening with the players on the roster, whether it's like typos on a damn statue, whether it's 
hiring someone like Magic Johnson, who clearly was not interested in doing the job. With, you know, regardless of of what we want to point the the flashlight at, from the top down, there's been incompetence. And so, like to me, when you weigh the realities of their predicament this season against what they need to achieve this off season, with whether or not the leadership is capable of executing that, I don't have great optimistic feelings about their ability to get there. So again, I'm not writing LeBron off. No, I don't think this is their last chance, but I personally would be surprised if I got to watch LeBron James play in the NBA finals again. All right, moving on to our power rankings. The one drop off from our two weeks ago list are the Cleveland Cavaliers. They are three and five since our last rankings on March 18th. They lost to Miami twice. They lost to Minnesota. They lost to Denver and they have a really bad loss to Charlotte bottom 10 in both offense and defense over that span. So we're dropping the Cavs for now. Number 10, gasp. The Los Angeles Lakers are cracking into our power rankings for the first time in in forever. Six and one since our last rankings, including yet another win over the Milwaukee Bucks in Milwaukee without LeBron. Since January 7th, a 39-game sample size, the Lakers are 25 and 14. That is the fifth best record in all of basketball during that span. Again, over a sample size of almost half the season. They are fifth in offensive rating over that span. Second in three-point percentage over that span. They're shooting over 40% from three as a team since January 7th. They are second in points in the paint per 100 possession over that span. So a really nice combination of accurate perimeter shooting and interior dominance. But here's the most encouraging stat and the justification for why I have the Lakers at 10th in the power rankings. According to Cleaning the Glass, against the top 10 teams in the NBA in point differential... They have 17 wins, which is the most in the league. They have a 55% win percentage, which is the fifth best in the league. And they have a plus 1.5 point differential per 100 possessions, which is the fifth best mark in the league. The Lakers have been one of the very best teams in the league this year at beating the good teams. In addition to playing really, really good basketball outside of a brief stretch, they were 15 and nine, including the in-season tournament win. They are 25 and 14 since January 7th, which is the fifth best record in the league over that span. There's a three and 10 stretch there in the middle, which was right when everyone relaxed after winning the tournament. And obviously when Darvin Ham was tweaking with the lineup and taking their three, three of their top five players out. I am uh, again, do I think the Lakers are a legitimate championship contender like the, uh, the teams at the top of the league? No, but we're going to give them a shout out here for how good they've been playing over the course of the last couple of months. <laughs> 